everyone. Welcome to Arthritis at Home. Uh, we have another really, I think, fantastic episode coming to you today. I'm Cheryl Cohen. Uh, I lead Arthritis Consumer Experts. We're the host of Arthritis at Home. And uh, I live with rheumatoid arthritis, and I could not um, be more pleased and honored to be here today to share with you a conversation uh, with Ms. Carrie Barnes. Welcome back to the studio, uh, Carrie. It's such a pleasure to have you. Of course, our audience also knows you as Joint Journeys, uh, <laughs> the author of our blog um, and uh, your blog, our joint blog. Uh, it's just so lovely to see you again. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Good to be here. Yeah. I'm just going to tell the audience a little bit about you, Carrie, before we dive in sure. uh, to our conversation. So you're a person living with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, uh, to our audience, you describe yourself as an adventure-seeking mother of two. Uh, you live in Ontario. You're married. You're super active. Um, but you have RA, too. And you got involved in your local arthritis clinic as a patient ambassador a number of years ago. And I, I think over that time, um, audience, uh, Carrie has developed just an amazing, uh, I want to call bag of tools, bag of tricks mm -hmm. and tools um, to live well with rheumatoid arthritis, but also to support others in that journey as well. So um, uh, I'm just, again, uh, Carrie, uh, really happy to be here. And uh, and pick your brain about um, really specifically today about your blog. Uh, right. We are um, fast approaching at the end of year one of of the blog joint journeys. Um, really interested to hear your thoughts uh, about the blog, where uh, you see yourself at right now, what you're planning uh, moving forward throughout the rest of the year and uh, kind of what you have on your plate uh, uh, for next year, which is sort of a, a sneak peek into uh -huh. some of the things we're gonna be reading about. So um, with your permission, uh, I'll just dive right into the question set. For sure. Yeah, so listen, Joint Journeys is really um, about sharing your thoughts and experiences not just about RA, it's really about your life, kind of long dash, dot, 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 with RA. Um, and you've been sharing these thoughts with our audience for almost a year now. Um, how have you found that process for you as a person living with RA, but also a person living out in the world, a person who's, you know, in a, in a relationship, married, a person who's had children? What has that experience been like for you? Just simply writing the blog? Well, actually, it was when you asked me if I'd be willing to share some of my experiences and some of um, the correspondence that we'd had, it was actually a really a much bigger decision than I expected it to be. Wow. And the reason was, is that I felt like I had done a lot of really hard work um, shortly after I got diagnosed with RA. I had to really keep focused on not allowing my disease to define me and and that being who I became. I didn't want to become my disease. And so I really focused on who am I as a person? I'm a mother, I'm a friend, I like to garden, I like to cook, I like to be active, I'm a nurse, I like to be involved in my community. I am all of those things and I also have RA instead of I have RA and then filter everything through that. So I had done a lot of hard work on that. And you know, I I didn't really talk about my RA with almost anybody, unless they asked, it was my mom or my dad would usually say, how are you doing? Or some close friends would, you know, they'd ask about it, but it wasn't something that was really forefront for me. I wanted to be me first. Um, and let that define me. And so when I sort of like went public <laughs> and into, with this blog, so many people said, I had no idea. I had no idea. Like so many responses from friends and coworkers and all of that. And I, it was a little bit overwhelming. And I thought, oh, well, 
okay, I guess I did a good job of, you know, not hiding, letting my hiding, <laughs> hiding, but maybe it was time to let that voice out, yeah. you know, and just as many people who said, I had no idea. They were also like, oh man, I got to share something with you. So, so many more connections have been made and like maybe deeper friendships. Cause I think I just allowed myself to be that little bit more vulnerable, which I think is really important for, you know, for good connection with, with other human beings. And like, as wonderful it was, that was actually hard. That was hard because now I had to find the right words. And, you know, I, I, the last thing I wanted was pity. The yeah. last thing I wanted was special treatment. Oh, let me get that chair for you. Well, I'm, I'm good. Like, it's, you know, like I understand their need to participate in it and to feel like they're being helpful and supportive. I get that. But the funny thing is, is where I thought I would get pity, I actually got respect. And where I thought somebody would think that I was weak or less than, they would say, I didn't realize how strong you really are, that you, you know, you can organize your life like this, and you're still able to do a lot of things you love to do. And um, like you prioritize and you do all these things. I'm like, oh, people oh okay so they've noticed now okay so I was I was expecting the opposite of of the response I got so that interaction has been really meaningful to me that really think okay so I I think I can do this and maybe I should keep doing this yeah you know it's so interesting Carrie the whole idea about kind of exposing oneself right about yeah. sharing uh, it, it one, it's about your own personal experience, not just with disease, but with life with disease, right? Yeah. Life with RA, hence the title of uh, your mm -hmm. blog. Um, it 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 does open oneself up to vulnerability, mm -hmm. and when you become vulnerable, um, there's it can be scary, but boy, oh boy, that place of vulnerability, the rich learning experience it offers someone living with a chronic disease is actually pretty incredible. Um, yeah. And for, for me, I, I remember when I started telling people and like you, I was, I just sort of wanted to keep it to myself. I didn't want anyone judging the book by the cover. Um, because as an athlete, as a former high performance athlete, I was always judged by my cover. And I knew how to do that. I knew really well how to do that. Oh, look how high she jumps or look how hard she hits or, you know, look how well she plays defense. Like as a volleyball player, those are the things that I used to do. Yeah. Um, but to actually take those kind of clothes off to actually crack my chest open, so to speak, and yeah. let people in was uh, was not easy but it was actually that place of vulnerability that led me to to acceptance of my diagnosis. Yeah, but that's actually it. keeping all that stuff covered up kept me in denial. Hmm. It looked like I was in denial, but that kept me in denial. Um, so yeah, it's so I, fascinating the differences, but similarities. I think too, as um as a woman, we have, we heap even more expectations on ourselves to be strong and powerful and independent and, you know, all these things, rah, 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 yeah. when, when really, and, and those are not bad things, but showing that you have some weakness or that you need help or you aren't quite enough on your own, those are beautiful, powerful things that just celebrate your humanity really yeah. and and then when you connect with other people who who fill in those those spots for you in your life that is just that's incredible yeah and I, and I just I I think through like the blog I have a lot of people who read it don't necessarily have a chronic illness but they have something that they've been struggling with for a long time and somehow it resonates with them whether it's finances or health or a child that you know their relationship isn't good whatever it is because you can be vulnerable and share something you seem safe 
Yeah. And so they come and, and then they want to connect. And it's it's it, the, out of the blue, old schoolmates have connected like from a bazillion years ago and like stuff like that. And I think, oh, OK, so this is maybe this is the connection that is important. So see that and that's kind of when we first started this conversation the two of us first by exchanging some, we knew one another prior to this, obviously doing some advocacy uh, work together and just becoming kind of fast friends. I got my hooks into you. I wouldn't let you go. <laughs> I made you be my friend. Uh, but it's, it's really the, what I sense from our readership, from the comments we're also getting from the social listening we are doing um, Carrie, it's not just, and this was with intention that that we've done this, uh, you and, and Ace, is produce something, create something that does transcend RA, really. Yeah. Um, it, because in actual fact, you can swap out the acronym RA or the words rheumatoid arthritis for something else, a, a struggle. A struggle. A barrier yeah. or an obstacle, a problem. Yeah. And everything else that you write around it is still very relevant. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit, it's a little bit plug and play, which shows the beauty of humans, the human condition, right? Mm -hmm. um, how we're snowflakes, we're ends of one, so to speak, but also we can learn so much from each other in our, in our yeah. Life experiences. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Hey, um, you've written now as we near uh, the end of the first year, probably about a dozen or so different pieces, each having a different topic. Um, I'm curious to know, and if you'd share with the audience, Carrie, what, what brings you to a topic? What is it um, that kind of inspires or compels you to sit down and uh, and put your fingers on your keyboard. I want to say pen to paper, pen to paper but I, yes. I suspect it's it's key it's fingers to keyboard now. Um, what what's the secret sauce? If if you can share that with our audience. Oh man, well if you ask my coworkers, they'll tell you that I'm a chronic overthinker. <laughs> So <laughs> it's, it's, it, I ask a lot of questions because a question to me just isn't like, there's, there's no end to the answers. Well, that, and then I want to ask this question and then this question. And then, so I find that I do ask a lot of questions about life in general. And that always just gives me some sort of like a thought that just kind of bangs around in my head for for some time I have actually not well pencil to paper I have this little notebook oh <laughs> around. my kind I have this of little girl notebook my kind of writer because pencil is is my favorite and I either doodle or I just write little things love it so if, if something comes to my mind I just write it down but um if something is kind of rattling around and I really want to like figure out where what I'm doing with that, I will go for a walk, a run, yeah. or a bike ride, or I need I get moving and somehow that helps. And then usually I can I come home and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if Cheryl's interested in this. <laughs> and off it goes. I so, love it. I love it. Um, obviously seasons have impacted some of the topics that you've chosen. Yeah. <laughs> um there are the seasonal themes for sure. Um I I believe you're first post uh was about seedlings was it yeah what? well I yeah. think I don't I think one of the first times I emailed you might have been was about, about that. seedlings yeah yes yes and yes. I just there's something about <laughs> that process of it sounds maybe silly but giving birth to this little seed and <laughs> the little green things it's so exciting to see you know, as the season is really desperately trying to change to see these little green leaves pop out of the dark brown soil. Um, and uh, yeah, it was one of those emails, I think, that just totally captivated me and thought, yeah, you know, that seedling piece really, for me, resonated because it's kind of how I find I've dealt with my own disease I get this idea it just pops out of the underground, you know, just breaks the surface. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's kind of odd or that doesn't feel good or that feels great. You know, how do I water that or how do I weed that? 
you know, how do I weed that sucker out? Um, and this whole process of growing and uh, what happens, um, you know, when sun hits something, when the light of yeah. knowing hits something uh, and how transformative that can be to your, to your life, like it is to a little tiny plant. Yeah, I know. And it, 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 the nurturing process, I suppose, could be a good metaphor. You can nurture yeah. ideas and and thoughts and that too. So yeah. what? I don't know. If I, I, sorry, I have a good friend who is doing her master's in, I think, creative nonfiction writing. And so she's asked me several times, what's your writing process? And I'm like, I go for <laughs> a walk. I yeah. write in a little book. And she's like, no, like, what's your formal writing process? I'm like, yeah yeah you know some people follow uh follow traditional uh kind of a uh, framework building or outlining yeah. some people just sit down and write what's in their heart yeah uh, obviously having writing some writing training you you do write in your job uh writing is a necessity and writing with clarity is a necessity in a medical profession um something I've, I've learned well in patient education it's very different than creative or fiction writing uh and writing to audience is so so important so probably she was trying she or he or they were trying to uh uh kind of dig away at what you know what is the formula for for joint journeys and for carrie barnes um yeah. <laughs> you know when we think about writing uh carrie we it's such a process of self-exploration at the very root of it, right? Um, what have you learned about yourself over kind of the last year? And let's kind of winnow in on, on, on in the context of living with RA. So, you know, I know you've written about so many different topics over the last year and each of them you've brought home. To, to that context in some ways not that that's what defines you but it is something you deal with every day you mm -hmm. I mean we've talked about this before I get up and I kind of take an inventory of my joints and I say okay what is that like how's my back today how's it currently I have a horrible ankle issue what you know what is my capability with this ankle today um how am I going to have to self-care around it to do what I know I need to do or what can I put up like? So give us some idea um, about some of the things you've learned about in the context of writing joint journeys and, and living with RA. Well, I think what I've realized about myself is that whether I want to admit it or not, that there is a that having RA has had an impact on not just my physical life but also the way I interact with my world and with my community, with my family. And I think that I've had to learn to be reflective. So like you said, you have to, you know, you're doing a physical inventory, but you're also doing a mental inventory. You're doing like an emotional inventory because because RA really does get its fingers into all of those aspects of your life. And so you kind of have to gauge where you're at and, and that will affect, well, that will impact how you interact with your world that day. Now you still have a choice on how you allow yourself to be responsive or reactive or whatever, but just being really aware of that. So I think that I had sort of, as I'm writing, I'm realizing that, yeah, this really has impacted how I see the world and how I interact with it. And um, that's been really good to know that because I think that I've been able also to give myself a little bit of grace. So on days when I'm a little more cranky than I maybe think I should be, I can say still not okay, but okay. I see what's happening here and I can see yeah. why those interactions happened. And so next time I can maybe say no to whatever activity or I can sleep a little bit more or whatever it happens to be that will impact that interaction. So I think it's been really good for me to do that, have that reflection piece yeah. to say, yeah, no, this definitely has had a very direct impact on 
on my interactions with my world, really. <laughs> yeah, so well said. You know, um, it's it's just an amazing thing that you're doing. And it reminds me, uh, and, and your ability to actually clearly talk about it is so powerful for our community, but also I think for the world at large. It's not just... I think joint journeys and your writing and your ability and willingness to share doesn't just have an impact on people with arthritis or other forms of arthritis who tune in, uh, read your blog or, or watch arthritis at home. It's the learnings that the bigger community, that the bigger human community um, can benefit from. And, and that is, uh, you know, knowing that people no matter whether you have RA or not, have issues, right? Kind of, uh, uh, Dr. Stutz always says, life is a struggle. That's what life is. And it's how you look at the struggle. It's how you frame the struggle. It's how you approach the struggle um, that changes, can direct and, and or change one's experience with it, which is a really powerful thing. The other thing you remind me uh, to, to share with the audience is that, you know, if you want to explore writing sit down grab a notebook play on your computer writing is so or sketching is so therapeutic as you've really elegantly uh shared with us that it has been for you carrie it certainly is true for me um it has been cathartic in so many ways and i believe can be for every single person and it's not that we sit down to win the Nobel uh, Prize in Literature. It's that we sit down and open up to ourselves first. Um, so you can write your life story and never share it with anyone but beg yourself and still benefit from it, right? I think you're absolutely right. And yeah. the world will benefit from it because you will love yourself more deeply. You will share That's more right. openly uh, about yourself with others. You can change your life just by writing for yourself. You can change other people's lives by writing just for yourself. Um, and I really believe everyone has a movie inside of them. I really think everyone ah! is, is a blockbuster movie because of our just incredible uniqueness as, as human beings and our life stories are so rich and so richly different um, mm -hmm. that, that you know, that the world is just this creative journey and, and writing is a big, big piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to uh, sort of wrap our little chat here um, on the on the eve of your one year anniversary of Joint Journeys, yeah. uh, a, a Life with Arthritis by Carrie Barnes, by thanking you so much for everything that you do uh, with ACE, for our community, for the world at large. You're one of those just shining, bright, shining people in my life. And I really appreciate that so much. Uh, and I know there are others tuning in who feel the same. So thank you so much, Gary. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me today. Thanks. And we'll see you again on another episode of Arthritis at Home.